Hello everybody, this is Zigzag Zog coming to you from Western Kentucky and we are about to dive into the new DLC for Total War, the Eight Princes DLC, so let's get set up. And I've decided, I've kind of looked through the, the possible princes I could be and I decided to go with Simai. Simai. I, thong, I think I might be saying that semi close to normal, but we got a whole new set of names for me to mess up on now. So, Simai, that is who we will be playing as. Plus 25 ammunition for all units faction wide, as long as he is the leader, and he is or will be. And plus 10 morale when defending as the leader. We have some unique or features, unique units, whatever you want to call it. We have. The Infantry of Jing, the Polearm Infantry, which is our anti-cavalry unit. We have the Archers of Jing, which uh, we get once we achieve, and I think we already are, at rank 3 or higher for both those. Our Reformed Infrastructure, Building and Commandery Capitals will impact the increase and decrease of Reformation and Restructure Administration. So we have something called Reformation that is our play style focus with internal development. Uh, the better high, higher Reformation we are able to achieve increases our trade influence, reduces corruption, increases research fee, uh, speed, and is determined by settlement development. So, and our starting noteworthy character Huang Fu Shang, or actually I don't know that we start with him, but we'll find out. Huang Shu Fang will be one of our notable, notable characters, so we will join in the romance mode. We will one more time play on very hard, very hard. Uh, once I get a playthrough through on either the main campaign or this one, I'll then make that jump up to legendary. But that's how we're going to start this one. Let's dive in. I may or may not edit out all the loading screens or the, the intro screens, uh, just depending on how long it ends up being. But here we go. All right, here we are. The first mission issued. Destroy the traitors. There is a storm brewing in the Imperial Court, Simai. Every prince of Jin views the situation with opportunity in their eyes, and with good reason. Yet, you must stand on your principles and defend the dynasty. There are brigands and bandits in your land. Come to make merry amidst the chaos. Show them steel and justice. So, looking around here a little bit, we get success on this mission by defeating him, which we should hear in a moment. Plus three spirit alignment, and that's a slightly different mechanic that we have. I noticed up here we have four different kinds of alignments. I'm not sure exactly how that will ultimately play out, but obviously we get rewards and benefits by increasing these different alignments. The spirit alignment seems to help with prestige and diplomatic relations. The mind alignment seems to have uh, has some prestige effects too and helps our research rate. Uh, the Might Alignment, as you would think, helps campaign movement and probably more military-focused military, military focused things, along with Prestige. And finally, the Wealth Alignment, increasing income from various sources. I'm sure the, the benefits will be different at different levels as we increase, but we'll find out. We also have here is our Reformation Bar. We had Heroism for Sun John. It was easy to figure out how to increase that. Just win those battles, and your Heroism increased in kind here i guess we have to look at being somewhat of a builder and so we'll get down into the town and see what we're able to do there in just a moment uh, we also have an advisor position open up here and we can take a look at who we have we also have a son a whopping one year old so we aren't going to see his abilities for a while till he comes of age but we have Bu Jun in our court, and he doesn't seem to be uh, the kind that gets along with everybody. He disregards honor, disregards trustworthiness, so um, he may be one to, to keep away from some of the others. We'll see what his administrator abilities are uh, as we look further in, but I think, let's see what kind of 
Huang Fu Shang, he adds satisfaction recruit and reduces recruitment costs for melee spear and increases armor for spear, increases trade influence. So he has a, a lot of nice positive effects as our advisor. Our wife, Hua, Jing, Hua Jin Ting, she doesn't do so much for us. Plus 10 character experience, plus satisfaction. And Bu Jun, well, uh, it clear to see who my advisor is going to be starting off. I get the most benefit right now from Huang Fu Shang, and that's who I'm going to put up there. Let's confirm that. And we are moving forward. Okay, we got a battle coming up. I don't know if there's much else to look at. We've got neighboring provinces. I think we start out at war with Li Chang here to the south. Uh, we're not friends with Mao Ren, but I don't think we're at war to start. Uh, we've got our, we got a new best bud up here, Ruan Shen. He seems to be the one most open to us, and we have a non-aggression pact, and he has a decent attitude or, towards us. Uh, Sima Chi, another in the Sima clan. I don't see Sima Chi over here, so who knows exactly how? Oh, I guess we have slight separation here between. Ron Shen and Sima Chi, so that's why we we don't have him show him up on this list. But we have Sima Mao, so we're we're not in 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 an ugly situation. Oh, Ron Shen, yeah, he's the one right there. We have a non-aggression pact with him. We had the non-aggression pact with Sima Liang, who is way up here kind of inconsequential there and we are yes at war with Li Chang so that kind of gives us our setup we're gonna move in and see if we can accomplish or beat this mission do we have any ancillaries that can help us out here we have a red champions leather let's see if we can equip everybody or anybody with any of these things uh, we're looking who who might benefit from a red armor but it looks like the same as what he already has yeah, the one that he currently has. This one is part of a set, Lord of Fire. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. So let's equip the one that's part of a set in case we happen to find the rest of the set and take benefit from that. Um, on the battlefield, who have we got available? We have Expertise... A land shaper and resolve adds reserves to an administered commandery. Well, resolve is our strength. And that adds authority. We don't really have anybody in need of authority, but we will temporarily just increase Huang Fu Shang's satisfaction. We'll equip that there. Right, we don't have any perfect spot for our follower here, so we'll just equip Simai with the land shaper for now. Obviously, subject to change as soon as we start picking up some more. And we have ancillary set out. We've done our appointment, and I think we are ready for the very first battle of the game. So let's jump on in. One boy. What kind of a map are we looking at here? Pretty open, pretty open. We'll be up here by a river, but it looks fairly flat and open. Any hills aren't super consequential, so let's get down in there and set up. We're predicted for a decisive victory. Let's see if we can't deliver on that. Okay, here we go. So we got a slight rain falling. He's got cavalry. He's got halberds. And I would think I have the advantage from what I looked at. Yeah, we're a vanguard. We're probably okay in, in meeting him in battle, I'm thinking. 
But let's set up up kind of on this rise. It's not a super large hill, so I don't know if that'll have any kind of massive impact on our battle plans. But I'm thinking if we put... Oh good, we have guerrilla deployment with this one general, but I'm not going to partake of it in this... Well, I guess I can. Let's uh, We can partake of it. So let's just get our spearmen behind here. Because what we'll do is we will set up the axemen over this way. Kind of protect so he can't flank us on this side and see if we can't force his cavalry over on this side where we will advance our spearmen as protection on the flank from his cavalry. So that's that's the rough immediate plan. And we'll bring our Huang Fu Shang over here. I don't think he needs to duel, but I will definitely see if we can't get a little duel going in with Sima Yi. Just test him out and see how he's going to perform. So let's start this battle. They're out of view at the moment, but that allows us to get everybody in position. We will move up our archers first, just to the front of the line. And we will move those spearmen just behind, or just to the other side of the line. Now our position is set. The question being, Will he advance? Let's go look for a duel. Maybe with his cavalry, he will think he can gain an advantage by trying to flank. And I did see them heading up this way, so that's good that they're not going around behind the rock, because that would defeat my whole battle plan. And we'd have to adjust on the fly. Let's go see my E. Let's see what you find over here. There we go. Let's accept. Let's do some battle here. We haven't had a duel in a while. It is time. Let's see what kind of a charge we get. Kabloom. Knock him off the horse. There we go. And everybody will part like the Red Sea around our duel. As our arrows are already engaging... We're going to have to make sure we back them up in timely fashion. I'm worried about this cavalry. Is he going to go around the rock? We'll just have to keep an eye on him. But hopefully my archers in the front will tempt. It's time to bring him back in a rush. I hope I didn't wait too long. Get out of there, guys. Get out of there. And the duel seems to be going in our favor. Shoo-wee. Okay, archers, let's take out some cavalry. Let's see if we can nail down some cavalry, do some damage. And they're all focusing on the axemen. Let's get out here for some su support on the rear side with my spearmen. They are hammering, hammering, hammering. Get out of those lines. Those lines are pushing back. Let's get backed up so we don't. Okay, we got... We have defeated their general. I didn't go back in for the close-up because I was so worried over here, but I think we have it in hand. Let's bring this spearmen up against the cavalry. Let's get you focused back on that cavalry, which is the last unit we have remaining. And there we go. So a nice, quick, simple, claim victory first battle like they usually are. Let's see what kind of damage we did. Left him with 211 units. For our first victory of the Eight Princes DLC. <laughs> That's not saying much. Ugh. Oh, that was bloody. Oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> oh, these these cutscenes, these little graphics with the blood just somehow make me laugh. They're so crazy. Um, we're going to go. Our replenishment doesn't look too, too, too bad. So let's just get some extra funds so we can do some building in our main city, which once again is Changsha, which we'll see how the battle down in the Changsha area compares to Sun John's battle down in the Changsha area and see how this DLC differs. It's kind of why I picked this faction is kind of get a sense on how it differs in playing mainly in the same general area and see if we have some what kind of different feels. We already know we have different alignments over here. We all have a different uh, faction strength over here with Reformation. So we'll, that'll, that'll offer a slightly different flavor. And as we move forward, we'll see what else, what other kind of differences we notice and see as we play through. So we gain some spirit alignment, which will help diplomatic relations when we get to the next level. And the Empress, I th see she's probably going to be a thorn in our side, demanding all sorts of things. But let's see what she's looking for right now. She demands that traitors be crushed. The Emperor has decreed Wai Guan and Sima Liang, formerly regents of the realm, are traitors and to be arrested. You have been tasked by the Empress to deal with their nearby allies. Yet, how vigorously do you pursue them? Well, this kind of gives us a chance to figure out how we want to align with these traits over here. And I think just the way I generally do it i think i'm going to go with the mind alignment kind of work on our research rate and, and being maybe a leader in research so maybe we can stand out that way above the other provinces obviously um might is very tempting also but just my general way of doing it is investing in the infrastructure is how i prefer get my income get everything set up and built uh, might be a little slower in the beginning, but I think it builds us to a better point of strength later on in the playthrough. So here we go. That is it. Now we have a mission issued. Construct a building. The Empress does not seem thrilled at your offer. She doesn't seem thrilled at me building my infrastructure. It sounds like she wants me to go to battle quickly. This is the best you can offer me? Fine. So be it. But be aware. If you fail me, there will be repercussions. So once we upgrade a building, we will work on our mind alignment, which is right in line with what we're doing right now. And we will be in favor for five turns with that picky, picky empress that seems to be her personality early on here in this new DLC. All right, here we go. We got our unit here, and we just, it seems in my other playthrough, Sinjan just managed to finally consolidate Changsha, and here we go on our own. We're going to look at consolidating uh, the Changsha commandery by taking over the tea house. Let's see if we can do that even with some battle scars from our first initial, and yeah, it doesn't look like it will be too challenging. Although we have a lot of hills and a lot of trees. So let's see if we can work those to our advantage. We have a decisive victory that we are pegged to achieve. So let's see if we can match what the computer says we should accomplish. We obviously have the advantage in generalship for this battle. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Hopefully we can just position and try and minimize our own casualties in this conflict. We'll find out. Isn't that always the goal? Minimize casualties so you can keep on moving, keep on trucking. Let's see. Quite hilly. I'm going to predict they're going to take the high ground right in the center in their area. That is my prediction. Now, where do I want to best set up? So I guess I'll take my little high ground that I am able to take and maneuver from there to try and make progress. I think we'll just... Not sure, not sure. Let's do this. We'll keep our archers as a group, and then we will line up the rest. 
spearmen to take up the flanks. There we go. And we'll bring everybody else in. Maybe uh, we can bring you, Huang Fu Shang, up towards the front. I don't know if you, you might be hidden right here if we're lucky. Just to keep vision. Um, how about we hide you over in these trees over here and see if we can have you hidden over there. Looks like you are hidden over there. Just to scout out for us where it might be best for us to locate ourselves. And let's start the battle. Okay, we do have vision right where I thought they'd be. At the top of the hill, the forested hill. So let's start maneuvering our forces over in that direction. We'll take this little minor hill first as a first step. Looks like his archers are in the back, so I don't mind advancing first with my archers leading the way, trying to do some damage before his archers move into support. No cavalry, have to get used to maneuverability not being there. I'm used to having some cavalry to be able to send around in the back towards those archers. We don't have that luxury this time. Maybe our generals will be the flanking force since they have the most speed of any of my units at the moment. So let's speed this up and get our units in place. It's gonna be, there's gonna be no dueling going on with these forces. Oh, we didn't quite get them over to the proper hill, did we? So let's do another maneuver with our forces here. Slow down time just in case I do that mistaken misclick, which sometimes happens. And position them to get up the hill. Come on, guys. Move it, move it, move it. Let's speed you up. Let's get in position. Just make sure they aren't moving at us. Oh, I saw some arrows shoot up. Did we briefly get just close enough for their arrows to engage? Not quite. They're still in the back row. Okay, let's... I'm thinking we will now look at advancing into arrow range. We don't have to advance too much farther. Let's see if we can't get our force up in that direction, I'm guessing, and then maybe a little spin move there will get us placed and in range if we move fast. And let's see if we can sneak Huang Fu Shang over this way. Have someone semi nearby to go after those archers once their archers decide or are able to start engaging. Okay, what kind of range do we have on our archers? Are we we're in range of theirs too now, so we gotta be careful there. But we are in the trees. We don't have loose formation available or anything, any formation for that matter. So let's get some of our archers to start taking some shots up here. We've got Huang Fu Shang hidden in the trees, so if they advance or expose those archers in the back, or if they start moving up to fire, I think I'm going to be tempted to make a move. Let's see if we can hide you, Simai. So if we can get all the benefit of our arrows shooting and then disrupt their arrows from shooting, that should help minimize our casualties. And this force, let's move you a little closer because you're taking a high arching and I think when you see that high arching arrow alignment, Oh, we got some advancement going now. So let's just 
so I don't get distracted moving everybody else. Bring our archers back in a rush. And let's see if we can't, with our own generals, get off here to the side. And disrupt their archers as quick as possible. Stay away from those halberds. Yeah, I'm fine. Draw off some of those halberds. Come on, Simai, get out of there. And let's move in on these archers. Let's see if we can't disrupt a little bit. Let's go in for relief and let's get our archers. We can get some more long range support out here. Okay, I'm not interested in too much halberd damage. Let's try. We got one weakened on the way, and the archers are working on their archers. And let's bring our generals back to hit the line in the rear over here. Let's bring our swordsmen out. I mean, our spearmen out. See what kind of shock we can do there. We did a little shock value in the back. Neither of their power moves are ready, but the rear flank is weakening these guys and our axemen let's do some charges here now let's get aggressive with the axemen get some charge bonuses and turn around the spearmen okay archers get busy again with their own archers let's do some damage and weaken them up Just don't have the maneuverability without a lot of cavalry. Okay, their archers have broken. We got those halberds that regrouped in the back, but they won't last long. And we've broken up front. Let's just take our generals back here and break them. We got arrow. Oh, well, let's go break the archers again. Those pesky little devils are trying to pepper us with arrows, and I don't like it. Okay, I'm out of arrows now, so let's attack the halberds with some axemen who can do possibly some more attack damage. Oh, they just broke. Everybody's breaking now, so I think we finally got it. There we go. They finally realized this was futile. Resistance was futile. And the battle, and it's decisive, just as predicted. What do you know? So we have, or should now, have a nice completed commandery. We got the T resource. I assume there's still T here that will help. Yeah, the Changsha Tea House. There we go. In a hundred years' time, the T is still there. Okay. Our next battle, I think, is... I think we're going to look at moving on down against the one opponent we are at war with down here into the Lingling Ling area. Li Chang is down there, and that's where we're going to head off to next. Um, we do have one more thing to look at here at this point. Um, we no longer have the tree blossoms as far as our reforms go. We just have the scroll pattern, which is kind of, I guess, similar to some of the other yellow turbanish... Um, some of the other minor fact, different DLC kind of factions or other fact, I can't even think of all who has the scroll format, but this is what we have. At our first level of minor prints, we have available to us all the following reforms. Then as we gain rank, we unlock 
access to even further reforms. Uh, but to keep in line with what I'm looking to increase in infrastructure, I'm thinking, looking at these, looks like we have more military focused on the left. A little espionage focus in the center here. And then we get to more infrastructure kind of focuses here. Whether it's learning market, character salary, Buddhist uh, satisfaction, population growth, the Buddhist selflessness. <laughs> That's a tongue twister saying three times quickly. Um, workforce helping our construction time, which is very important for us since we apparently get benefits from building certain buildings so i'm tempted at the same time i want to increase because we once again are in a commandery where trade is a big deal so i think what we'll do is we'll probably start out with trade because i want to get my income increased with an extra trade agreement and unlike sun john we have some immediate um immediate guys to to trade with it would appear on the map so the, and then we'll probably jump over to workforce construction to help with our focus so let's research there okay looks like that is commandery secured as we thought Changsha is now under control once again now do we have the ability to build over here we have decent income but at the same time I'm probably gonna want to look at increasing my forces here a little bit um, but to keep along the whole trade thing let's increase doesn't it's it's funny I've built up some of these and now we're gonna start building these up again a hundred years later I guess they uh, went into disrepair and shrunk down again and here we are coming back to the trade port of Changsha to build it back up again. So that's where we'll start there. What kind of funds does it leave us? Not great income, but we need to look at increasing our forces somehow. Do we have any notable characters moving through the area right now? Not really. Um, what do we have available to recruit? Hmm, I like my archers of Jing. Kind of increase my archer contingent. They're going to cost us upkeep 77 per turn. We can afford that, and we have the funds to afford. And hopefully we'll get some passerbys that can come through that are have a strength with, some, with the cavalry. But for now, we'll go. There we go. We'll build up our archery contingent. That worked well for us as last battle. And what do we have, just to get an idea... So even to get to fire arrows, we're, we're a couple promotions away for Simai. So uh, we may have to look at adding a strategist or maybe someone else will come in because I know, well, right now we don't have a lot of walled cities. I think when I look, this is just a large town where I got to move against either the large town or the rice paddy. So I think we'll be okay for the moment. Let's t end the turn and see if we have anybody notable and hireable move through our territory. Going to have to get used to a whole new set of names and who is aligned with who. Who is the one I want to align myself with who is not. But anyway, we got a new mission issued. Sima Ai pursues reform. The events in motion cannot be stopped now. You must look to act as you think is best. You are loath to declare wars and decry your kin, so you can instead look to improve the lot of your people as chaos reigns, investigate reforms that better your lands, and hope this will change hearts and minds. So I am in the process of researching a reform, so as soon as that completes, I think it said it was about five turns, we will gain success on this mission. We got some new ancillaries, a black thoroughbred, cunning. Let's see who needs an upgrade in their horse. The black thoroughbred, 15 charge bonus. Not a huge difference other than the charge bonus. It is a better mass. 
But am I going to be charging so much with the champion? Hmm. Let's see if there's better use for that horse. Let's see what this one looks like. Speed, expertise. We're looking for cunning here. Not huge upgrades, so why don't we do this? The wife, too cunning, four cunning, increases her cunning, and it gives her a charge bonus and a chance for evading capture. So let's let's just for the moment, either even though she's not part of our forces and in an army, we'll park this horse over here. And I think that's the best home for the moment, for the time being. And that was the only ancillary to gain yet. Now we do have some new characters moving through the area. Let's take a peek and see if any of them are worthwhile. Chun Yu Mo. What are you looking at? Sima Yao. Anything good here? Ascetic. Incompetent. <laughs> okay, I don't need to hire anybody incompetent. Uh, Shi Zhu. What kind of traits are we looking at? Gracious, okay. We are looking at direct, resolve, charge, reflect. I kind of like that idea. And we have resolve, authority, satisfaction. Except you don't have, I'm kind of hoping to find somebody that might have a little bit of a focus on cavalry to help round out my force here. So I don't think these are my immediate answers, although the one was intriguing. Not a disaster to hire, but not right away. Let's take a look at Changsha. We Something I overlooked on the first turn is I could have assigned someone to these markets. We have Bu Jun available. Let's see, plus two reformation, plus 50 reformation from reformed infrastructure. Ah, so if I build a reformation-oriented building, these guys help. The impact of the Reformation, or can I just go to increase? That's a 15 turn assignment though. Let's start and see how this might affect us. Let's assign the restructured administration with, with Hua Jin, Jinting and see how that affects what we're going to be doing. Changsha. Let's take a look. Let's look at some of these. Where do we look and find out? Do we have some reformation-oriented buildings? I'm going to have to increase. Well, I don't know. I don't have the funds right now, but... Oh, here we go. Negative two reformation. That's probably not a kind of building I'm looking to build to increase my reformation. There we go. Schools plus reformation. Even the marketplace, which probably is one I'll look at building, won't increase noble support, but it has a pot of it, positive impact on reformation. So I think that's what we'll look at, that kind of stuff for our next building, is something to have a positive effect on reformation and see if we can start moving this meter forward and see how that mechanic works and helps us. Okay, Simai. Let's move and make a charge over to Lingling province and see if we can meet up with Li Chang. I guess we'll stick to the roads for now. It's harvest, so by the time I get up to the border, it will be autumn. I may or may not wait a turn before I move in here to conserve some of my supplies so I'm not traversing enemy territory in the winter because that makes a bigger impact on supplies. And uh, looks like that is it for this turn. Let's see what the next one brings for us. The road to the capital. Chaos consumes the land, but you remain the emperor's dutiful brother and servant, Sima Ai. To whatever end, you will uphold the dynasty even if you must fight your own family. Yet be wary of other princes whose favor sh shift like leaves in the breeze. Your actions may make enemies friends and friends enemies. Beware their fickle favors. So uh, road to the capital, that's just ranking up like a similar mission we've had in the past. The finest armor, gain a new suit of armor. 
A cart arrives in your capital filled with various goods from across the land. Among the myriad items is a gift from one of your talented armorers. A resplendent suit with a short, inspiring note attached from its maker saying, Only through strength and unity may the land be made whole. So we'll have some armor to let, take a look at. What is it? Armor of the Adept. It looks like it may be... I don't know if I have the right kind of person to really take use of that armor. It doesn't look like... Nope. Nope. So I don't have the right kind of person in my commandery yet to make use of that armor, but... It's nice to know that we have this armor craftsman, and as we build that and advance that, we might start seeing even better armor come our way. And character developments, let's just take a peek at who has arrived. Some low-level characters, Sima Yin. What do you look like, Sima Yin? You have your past loyalties to yourself, huh? Okay. <laughs> And you're a commander, though, who could take use of that armor that we just got. Coordinated, cordial, charismatic, increases your desire for administrative positions, plus 10% income from the commandery if you're an administrator. Let's take a look over here at the compare here. Solitary, lower satisfaction for this army. Food production is increased. You know, I'm tempted just to get somebody who can use that armor, and we will recruit. What does he have? We And we have the ability. There he has some uh, mounted units in his retinue, so that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean that way. Let's hire on Simi Yin, see how he's able to help us out. In fact, we have the funds to recruit Sima Yin. Yes, we do. And we now have some cavalry in our force as we move down to take on Li Chang. Um, why don't we go ahead? I don't have enough really to add anything else that I really care to. And our income is minor. And I'd like to add one more cavalry before we engage. So let's just hold off on spending at the moment. And there we go. One other thing I totally spaced out on and forgot to look at. Let's, we have a trade partnership available and I want to trade and keep Ron Shen as a good person. Because what I'm thinking is if we can keep our backside friendly while we expand this way down here to Li Chang, that'll help a little bit early on when I don't have a lot of armies to... Uh, to hold on to what I have, I am worried of Sima Mao near the top. That seems to be a threat of mine. So the quicker I can consolidate down here, um, hopefully the quicker I can then afford a second army to kind of keep up north in Changsha from any incursions from the north. So let's look at a trade agreement, see if we can... Let's see, Sima Chi is possible to trade with. I think we'll start out with... Oh no, I, I lost the chance because he already made the trade agreement with somebody else, probably with his, so he's not available. Shame on me, but at least he is green and friendly to us. But let's solidify Sima Chi here in the back. Let's negotiate. For you. And it's a nice positive deal, probably because I could have earned more money somewhere else, and those were the ones that got snapped up first. Shame on me for forgetting. New game, there's so much to look at. I forgot the basics. Forgot the basics. Let's just get some money back in this deal. Help make it more in our favor. We'll keep a little bit. Well, I don't want to go 0.4 plus. 0.5 plus, don't want to do that. There we go. Point one in his favor just to increase our standing with him. It's still okay. Um, let's go propose this deal and get some extra income, which we desperately need. And there, we got some trade out of the way. So our income is back up over a thousand, so we desperately needed that. And then our reform will become available 
in uh, three more turns and we'll be able to negotiate hopefully as long as there's trade available with someone else let's take this movement and get down to the border it's autumn let's set up for offensive right after the winter and in the meantime let's recruit that other cavalry that i was coveting and do i and i don't have enough for any other recruitment at this time so let's just hold off i think that should be enough looking at forces hopefully that will be enough as i make my advance in there Li chong isn't the most isn't the biggest army in the world of course nobody is this early on and let's call it a turn and see what happens what the winter brings And we have constructed our building. We'll have to see if I have enough funds left, if I want to use it for another building, or if we will choose to increase my army. But uh, mind alignment has increased. We have nobody. Let's see. Next, we've our our spirit alignment has three out of twenty to get to the next level. We're fifteen out of twenty in mind alignment, so that's a good one. We're we're closest on that one to get to the next level. Nothing nothing much on the others. So. We'll keep our eye on that to see how that improvement helps and our hopefully our trade, yeah, our, our income has improved with, with the trade port there. And we got some new characters running through, although having just built up my army and not having a lot of assignments for them, I don't know that I'll spend the money to bring them on board. Let's take a look at Changsha. And do we have something? I'm... Oh, this is locked. The marketplace is locked. Why is that? Oh, I have to be a small city before I can make it. So it looks like I have to look at saving up funds to get up to a small city before I can unlock some of these reformation positive things. I don't have to worry about corruption yet, I don't think. I really would like in this place to build the marketplace so that's going to force me in my trade strong Changsha province to have to upgrade my city first which will cost me some money so we will hope that the forces that we have built here will be enough I think I'll just bring in one more saber militia to round out the force and we'll be ready to invade there we go it'll be kind of weak because we won't gain that much recruitment the f in the winter of course we don't have a lot of snow I guess we're in the south so maybe it's not a bad thing to move forward but I'm gonna give a turn of recruitment here before we make our advance on Ling Ling to go against Li Chang down there and I don't think we'll just hold off on any other spending at this point trying to build up funds for our large or small city in Changsha. The Jin Empire has declared war on Sima Zhang. All right, he's pissed them off already. What do we have now? The Empress demands the supplies. People are starving, so says the Empress, at least who comes to you requesting a moderate but not insignificant amount of food to mitigate the citizen's plight. How do you respond? Um, I can increase mind alignment this way and that would get me to the next level there. Although I'll probably piss off the Empress by doing such a thing. And we will lose for three turns food production. We can pay for supplies, for wealth alignment, spirit alignment, medium food alignment, and then I can just refuse where I become out of favor. And I don't know that I want to test what being out of favor with the mighty empress involves. So let's go for what we're trying to build right now anyway. Plead famine, contribute less. And we've reached a first level. Okay. So we got some extra benefits at this level. Current level is increasing my research rate, which I'll take. And next level will increase my ammunition along with my research rate. 
and prestige. So uh, I, I'm happy moving forward in this mind alignment, and I'll remember to kind of keep a focus on archers because one of my um, benefits, I think, as as Sima Ai is increased ammunition for archers. So let's move forward. Do we have the ability to move forward and attack? We're just out of range of the city here. So let's move forward as far as we can. And we will work on attacking next turn, the town of Ling Ling, the large town. And we should have our reform kick in soon so we can start searching for an extra trade route. Let's press on one more turn, and then we'll probably be calling it a mission. We'll see if a battle resolves at the end. Ah, he fears those forces marching on his town. So Ling Ling, the large town, is now ours to take, I would hope and think. Sima Yi pursues reform. We have completed our first reform. It helps our spirit and mind alignment mind alignment so we are halfway to our next level with that increase my reforms accelerate oh plus 10 reformation so i'm happy for that for for five turns it looks like the these kind of things to my um, reformation are temporary whereas the buildings give me smaller increases it would appear but they're permanent so i guess that's the benefit for reform oriented buildings we'll find out when we are able to build such a building in Changsha and according getting me in that direction I think what I'm going to do is look at building up to the small city so I can then build the marketplace that I want so let's upgrade the town it's gonna eat up a chunk of our funds but it's something I think that needs to happen faction developments Dakin emissaries Da Qin, these peoples beyond China's border are purveyors of wealth and knowledge if we have but the patience to listen. The Silk Road carries foreign envoys back from a distant land, and with them comes enlightenment. A new year begins, a new opportunity to steer your people towards their destiny. So we've just met up with some of the emissar emissaries from other lands. Eavesdropper increases the expense of spies do we have who do we have that we can use an eavesdropper for probably Sima Yin he's not a faction leader how does the other guy compare plus two authority plus four authority so we're not going to trade him out there we'll park him right now over with Huang Fu Shang And we have a new reform. And we are going to go with the construction. Since we're going to need to build, 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 apparently in this playthrough, we will start the reform that will help us with that build, build, build strategy. So we've gone on a pretty long time in this episode. I hope you've gotten a good exposure to how this game is similar, how this game, this DLC is different. And next turn, it looks like we will be entering a battle for Ling Ling, the large town. So tune in again, see how that develops. And once again, this is Zig Zag Zog signing off from Western Kentucky. Thanks for watching.